Political prisoner Julian Assange is facing what could be his last legal chance to avoid extradition to the US. These were the scenes outside London's Royal Court of Justice today, where two judges have begun hearing arguments from the WikiLeaks founders' lawyers. They are asking for permission to lodge an appeal against Assange's removal to the US, and the court will decide on Wednesday whether Assange has the legal grounds to challenge earlier rulings backing extradition. If the court thinks he has a case, Assange will get another hearing on the merits of the extradition order. But the High Court might decide that there are no grounds for that appeal, in which case Assange will have no further legal avenues in the UK to prevent his extradition to the US. Assange's lawyer Jennifer Robinson gave Navarra Media her assessment of his case. We think we have really strong grounds for appeal. Obviously, the free speech elements of the case are super important. It's the first time in history a US publisher is being prosecuted for publishing information and prosecuted under the Espionage Act. Um, That is a real concern, but it remains to be seen. And if we're unsuccessful this week, if we don't get permission to appeal, this is our final appeal in the UK. We are prepared for the worst of all outcomes. We will apply to the European Court of Human Rights if we're unsuccessful this week. The road to this trial has been a long one for Assange, who has been held in Belmarsh prison since 2019. That followed seven years spent in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he was granted political asylum in 2012 against extradition to Sweden as part of a rape investigation. In 2019, Ecuador withdrew Assange's asylum. He was arrested by the UK authorities for breaching bail and sentenced to 50 weeks in prison. Soon after, Sweden dropped its investigation, only for the US to request Assange's extradition a few months later. That means that Assange has spent most of his time in Belmarsh on no criminal charges in the UK, being held there as a, quote, person awaiting extradition. For nearly four years following his initial 50 weeks prison sentence. According to his wife, Stella Assange, that imprisonment has had a disastrous effect on his health, including a stroke in 2021. His lawyers have said he is too ill to attend the hearing in London today. Asked about Assange's imprisonment outside the court, Stella Assange said this. He's been imprisoned for his journalism. He's in prison for almost five years in the UK's most notorious high security prison, Belmarsh. Um, And there is no way of writing this wrong. Why do you think he has been public enemy number one of these states for so long? Julian Julian exposed uh, the crimes of the West and uh, he exposed the true catastrophe of the wars um, in Iraq and Afghanistan and and the complicity in torture and so on. Uh, So he's um, been the greatest contributor to public knowledge around um, state criminality. And this is a retaliatory prosecution. Uh, It is a political persecution. If extradited to the US, Assange will face 17 espionage charges and one charge of computer misuse, which basically means hacking. If found guilty, he could face a prison term of 175 years. U.S. prosecutors argue that Assange conspired with former U.S. military intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning to illegally leak classified diplomatic cables and documents from Pentagon computers. That leak resulted in the publication of hundreds of thousands of classified documents on WikiLeaks in 2010, with some of them revealing the extent of Western brutality in Iraq and Afghanistan wars. The leaks included this video from a U.S. Apache helicopter in Iraq recorded in 2007. It shows a pilot training his sights on a group of men walking in Baghdad. Among them are two Reuters reporters, Saeed Khemag and Namir Nur al-Din, carrying their cameras. Moments later, the pilot says, light them up, shoot, and the helicopter fires on the group. At the time, the military stated that the men were shot because they were aiming machine gun fire and grenades at U.S. soldiers. Not only was that an outright lie, but the footage reveals even more disturbing details on the part of U.S. troops. When a van arrives to collect the injured and the dead, the Apache opens additional fire on the rescue operation. It later emerged that there were two children in that van, and both were killed. At the time, the U.S. military claimed their forces were, quote, engaged in combat operations against a hostile force, end quote. 
This, as well as other documents leaked by Manning and published by WikiLeaks, provided evidence of war crimes committed by coalition forces in Iraq. And yet the only people who have ever been prosecuted are Manning, Assange, and other whistleblowers. Assange's lawyers argue that he was acting as a journalist, exposing wrongdoing by Western states, and that he should be protected from U.S. prosecution by the press freedoms guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment. Assange has so far escaped extradition to the U.S. over fears for his safety. In January 2021, a British court blocked his removal to the States after it found that Assange would be at risk of suicide if held under harsh U.S. prison conditions. A year later, the High Court ruled that assurances made by the U.S. to keep Assange safe meant he could be extradited. And in March 2022, the UK Supreme Court refused to give Assange leave to appeal that decision. Finally, in June 2022, then Home Secretary Priti Patel ordered Assange's extradition to the US. But extradition isn't the only danger Assange has faced. In 2021, Yahoo News revealed this. The CIA and members of Trump's administration have discussed plans to have Assange kidnapped or assassinated in 2017 while he was sheltering in the Ecuadorian embassy. And Declassified Australia has also now warned that while the US hasn't charged Assange with any crimes carrying the death penalty, the Department of Justice could add new charges if he's extradited. They write this. The US could argue that Assange's publishing activities constitute espionage as a capital offense because it involved disclosing information relating to elements of US defense strategy with intent to injure the United States or aid a foreign government or communicating national defense information to the enemy in time of war. There is no prerequisite that anyone be killed as a result of the activity, which is the case here where the US is unable to prove that any person was killed or harmed as a result of Assange's publications. And since 1954, it doesn't matter whether the espionage was in peacetime or wartime. Assange continues to face huge dangers because of his exposure of Western crimes and complicity. Speaking outside the court, former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn gave his view on how Assange would be remembered by history. As a very brave man, um, along with so many other great journalists who suffered and were imprisoned, those that exposed the Nazis in Germany in the 30s, those that exposed the corporate horrors in the United States in the 1930s and since then, and those that have spoken up about secret prisons, about torture and everything else, I think he will always be known as the great journalist, the great investigative journalist, which is why it's so beyond disappointing the way almost the totality of the British media have either misreported or largely ignored this particular case. Corbyn there being pretty critical of how the media has reported on Assange's case. And now a dissident journalist who revealed abuses of power, whose murder has been discussed by intelligence agencies, and who spent four years in prison without ever being convicted by a court, may be facing his last chance to avoid extradition to the US over fears for his safety. Fears, remember, that a British court ruled were warranted. So how did the UK papers cover the story this morning? This was today's Guardian front page. And here's the Times' cover story. And this is the front page of the digital version of the New York Times. All focusing on the death of leading Russian opposition figure and Putin critic Alexei Navalny. So it looks like there's only one kind of dissident Western media is prepared to celebrate, namely those who aren't working to expose our crimes.